I thank you, Jesus, for the special time we have together as we celebrate you. We give you thanks and honor. Amen. Amen. If you have your Bibles, go to Genesis chapter 1, verse 3. And we read in the text, it says, And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. We read in John 8, 12, coincidentally, we read, Jesus says, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And then we read in the Christmas story in Matthew chapter 2. Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. I looked up the Greek word star. It translates to star. <laughs> what do stars do? Give light. And so many Bible scholars believe that this was no ordinary star. It was a supernatural star. Kind of like in the Old Testament, God led the people, his people, out of slavery. A cloud during the day and fire at night. And in this story, we see some supernatural star leading the wise men to baby Jesus. We read it in verse 9, if we go there. And behold, the star which they had seen in the east went before them till it came over and stood over where the young child was. Wow. Picture in your, in your mind, here with the wise men, seeing this take place for the first time. When they saw the star, they rejoiced. They were with exceedingly great joy. A better translation is, they were overwhelmed with joy. Let me ask you, when was the last time you were overwhelmed with joy? Maybe when your team won the, won the, won the, the Super Bowl? <laughs> when was the last time that you were so excited? Maybe you won a baseball game. Maybe you, won, you hit a home run. When was the last time you were so happy? And I was thinking about the most happiest time of my life. It's when I met my wife, Sherry, and we got married. I, I kept saying, this is so surreal, this is surreal, I couldn't, like, I'm married, I'm married, I'm so happy. And then the other time I was overwhelmed with joy is when Josiah was born and when Jaden was born, I was overwhelmed with joy, I was so happy. When was the last time you were overwhelmed with joy? These wise men are overwhelmed with joy when they see baby Jesus. When they see this beautiful star hovering over the house of Jesus Christ. But the other time I was so happy, overwhelmed with joy is when I, I found Jesus, or he found me at the age of 15. And I, I entered into a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. I was so happy. I, I went home and I was like, Mom, I, I didn't know how to express my faith back then. So I was like, Mom, do you need anything from the store? And she didn't know when it overcame me. Yeah, I need some milk. And so I ran to the store, and I was like, just so happy inside, because I knew I had God in my life. These wise men are so happy, because they found the Son of God. And when they had come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. They worshipped the baby. Not Mary, not Joseph. They worship baby Jesus. This is no ordinary child. I mean, when my baby was born, when Josiah was born, when Jaden was born, I didn't worship my kids. I mean, I was happy to have them, but I didn't start, oh, start praying to them or worshiping my kids. But these wise men, these smart, intelligent men, are on their knees worshiping this newborn king. When they had opened up their treasures, they present gifts to him, gold, frankincense, 
and myrrh. Let me ask you a question. What will you give Jesus this Christmas? See, th these wise men had gifts for... I know, I know nowadays we give gifts to each other. But what gift will you give God this Christmas? These wise men had gifts to give to Jesus. The first gift they had to give to Jesus is gold. See, back in those days, kings were, they wore gold crowns or they sat on gold. But this is a, a practical, too, because this is a poor family. They could actually use this gold, you know, to pay their mortgage or to pay off their camels or whatever they were riding back then. This was gold that they could really use because there is a poor family and they could use this money. But it also represents King Jesus. He is the King of Kings, Lord of Lords. The next gift was frankincense. And I actually have some frankincense right here. I don't know if I should light it. It stinks. I, I lit it earlier, but you can smell it maybe for yourself. But maybe like it was for Joseph, maybe when he had to go to the bathroom or something. <laughs> I, I don't know. But actually, back in those days, it was the priests, they would light frankincense. It was an incense unto the Lord. It, it was a form of worship. The priests would light incense in the temple. And so Jesus became the great high priest. He's our mediator now to God. You don't have to go to, no offense to the Catholic priests, you don't have to go to a pope. You don't have to go to a pastor. You can go directly to God through Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is our new high priest. Can anybody hear me? Yes. Next item was myrrh. Why did they give him myrrh? See, we read in John 19.39, Aloe and myrrh was placed on the body of Christ. The way they embalmed people back then, the way... They, after someone died, they put spices over the, the person that's dead. The, the, the carcass wouldn't stink. The body wouldn't stink for too long. And so they, they would wipe myrrh over the body of Christ. That's what we read in the scriptures. And Jesus became the beautiful sacrifice for my sins. If you knew all my sins, you'd be like, why are you up here preaching? I have done some dirt. We've all done things that we regret in life. But the good news is, in Christ, there is the forgiveness of sins. Jesus died on the cross, just like that video, to free us from our sins. That's the story of Christmas. Jesus went from the cradle to the cross. What will you give Jesus this Christmas? He gave his best. What will you give Jesus? I wish I had a mirror right now. Because you know what Jesus really wants? He doesn't want your money. He wants you. He wants your heart. He wants your, your best. At this time, we're going to light candles. I didn't get a candle. Uh, for some reason, my, my son forgot to give me one. But uh, Josiah, have you had a candle for me? See... If you haven't got a candle, raise your hand. We're, we're going to get you a candle. So we read in Matthew 4, 14. If you could turn off the lights beside too, since you're back there. Or someone turn off the lights. Matthew 5, 14, we read, You are the light of the world. What's interesting, Jesus says, that he is the light of the world. Now he says, you are the light of the world. How could Jesus be the light of the world and you be that, the light of the world at the same time? Because if Jesus is in you, now you are called to be God's light to this dark world. I got a story for you. So um, I'm a basketball coach. And the hardest thing about coaching for me, in my opinion, is cutting kids. I don't like cutting kids. Because I know how it feels to get cut. When I tried out for basketball my junior year in high school, I got cut. So I know how it feels to get cut. 
And so I had a, cut, a kid I know, that uh, a kid that I coached before. And if I, I mentioned the name, you probably know who he is. And so I cut the kid, and I know the dad too, that, that was the hardest thing, cutting this kid. He's a good basketball player, but there are other kids that played better during tryouts, and I didn't want to be partial. I, I felt like, all right, if we're gonna have tryouts, the best kids should be on the team. And so this particular kid didn't do good at one of the tryouts. He did good on, on Wednesday, but Thursday he didn't do too good. So I gave him the sad news, I'm sorry you didn't make the team. And he started crying. Oh. And he's like, I'm, I'm sorry, I know I was off the night before, I didn't sleep good. And I'm, I already have my 12 man roster. If something opens up, I'll let you know. Make a long story short, I get a call from the dad. He's livid, angry with me. And it got so bad, I had to get off the phone with him. I was like, all right, I could tell he was so angry, he didn't want to talk to me, so we got off the phone. Because he started saying bad things about my son, Josiah. I'm like, why are you bringing Josiah into it? He didn't do nothing. He didn't do nothing. He wasn't part of the selection. He wasn't even out there during tryouts. So he's, now he's taking all his anger out on Josiah. And Josiah's like, what did he say about me? I don't want to talk. I don't want to tell you, Josiah. I don't want to tell you. And so this past Tuesday, I had to go meet with the principal, with his parent, and the athletic director at Leroy Green. And he was still angry at me. And we couldn't even have a conversation. Wow. And it, it got so bad, the principal says, Mr. Ochoa, you should just go now. Why don't you, you got a, a class you need to sub. And because it, the, the conversation was going nowhere. And so I, my heart was broken. I was like, man, I just lost, did I make the right decision? I just, you know, I'm trying to build relationships, not destroy relationships. Uh, and it, I was hurt and I start, I start praying for this man. And God answers prayers. Come Thursday, I'm at basketball practice and the parent shows up like, oh man, what does he want? And this time he hasn't changed in his heart. He's very emotional. He's like, hey, I'm so sorry for the way I treated you. I never should have said that about Josiah. And I'm so, would you say, accept my apology? I'm so sorry for what I, I did and said. I said, yeah, I forgive you. And it, it's, a, it's, a, it's over. It's, it's all good. And then I'm getting ready to leave. And he says, you know what, Coach Jose, you're hard not to like. You know what I was doing? I was being... God's life. God teaches us to forgive, doesn't he? Yeah. Who do you need to forgive? How could you be the light of Christ this Christmas and throughout the new year? If you want to be the light of Jesus, you got to learn how to forgive people. You got to learn how to forgive yourself. You got to learn how to humble yourself before God and ask him for forgiveness. Because we all need it. Could you stand? And if you want to be God's salt and light this Christmas and throughout the year, I want to encourage you to light your candle. And believe me, I'm not always God's salt and light. Sometimes I'm dark. What I mean is I'm not always being the perfect example of a Christian. But I, I, I want to do the best I can to be the light of Jesus. And I know you do too. That's why you're here. Remember what Jesus said to us. You are the light of the world. So Lord Jesus, uh, we want to be your light during Christmas time, but we also want to be your light throughout the year. You showed people love. Help us to love our enemies. Help us to forgive the people that have said things to hurt us. Even help us, God, to forgive the people that have done things that we can't even forget. God, help us. You, you say in your word that when you forgive us, you don't even hold our sins against us. That 
You throw our sins into the sea of forgetfulness. You have the power to forget sins. We don't. But Lord, help us to move forward and, and to not allow us to harbor negative feelings towards people. Help us to love people and, 